what do you think of the, the haircut? I know you guys wanted me to let it keep going, but. I mean, it's beautiful. Beautiful. My wife did this. The full afro was, it was excessive. It had reached. I the loved point it. Where... You should have kept it, Dave. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode nine of the Cookie Club with JD and Dom, a very fashionable Dom Smith. We've had uh, guests on the show as of late, and, and every one of them has been great. But today, we are taking it to another level because we're bringing in the skipper, the skipper of the New York Mets, Luis Rojas, joining us. Luis, thank you so much. Claps all around. I think we need a round of applause. I think he's the only one Hefe. who deserves one. Hefe. Thanks, guys. No, thank, thank you for having me. I mean, it's, it's an honor to be here, Steve. And I've seen some highlights of the show, and I, I got to say, all those highlights, is, they're amazing. They're pretty funny. I know these two together, they're trouble. Now, I will say, as you could tell by some of the highlights, that we're a very honest show. So you were actually our second choice for a Rojas on the show. We were hoping to go with Cookie Rojas just for the brand. But since he was unavailable, we decided that we, uh, we could go with, with the Mets skipper. But in all seriousness, Luis, how have you been, man? Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, what has this time been like, this, this crazy last couple of months for you? Well, uh, I, I got to say that, you know, for everyone, like, you know, it's been very much different. I mean, it's something that it's definitely taught us a lot about adapting and adjusting some things. And uh, I think we've done a pretty good job uh, as far as to uh, stay in touch. You know, the players, the coaches, uh, front office, um, ownership, the entire organization is basically talking. Uh, um, uh, and also the work here at the house. You know, I've been able to spend some quality time with the family, uh, watching my son from our clothes. Uh, taking classes and learning and, you know, being able to spend time with, uh, with my wife, Laura, as well. You know, it's something that usually doesn't happen. Um, and I think I'm speaking for everybody, maybe in baseball, you know, that's active right now, that uh, probably spends a lot of time on the field, you know, rather away from uh, the family. And this is something that we're, we're definitely appreciating. I mean, sometimes I stood in left field because um, I was the outfield coach last year with, in the middle of this two and they will have a race. If one of them went up the fly <laughs> ball and did not get to it, I'm telling you, I, I never seen somebody just get on somebody's skin like the way they do it to each other. I mean, it's, but that got him better. It's a friendly competition. JD, who, uh, who ran down more balls in the outfield? You were Dom. I want to I wanna go say Dom was the first, first ones. He had so much experience out there, but uh, I think I caught up to him but towards the second half, especially. So I'm not going to lie, JD did get a lot better in the outfield and his arm is better than mine. So he has me right there. So that's why I got to catch him in the arm category. So I got to get my arm better. Don made a throw in LA. <laughs> yeah. He made a throw in LA and that, that was, the, it was never forgotten. I'll tell you that. I mean, <laughs> oh, my God. We gotta find, we've got to find a clip of that because he was trying to throw it to second to catch somebody. I can't remember, but he ended up throwing a grenade to first base. I, I can't remember what it was, but I started dying laughing in the dugout. It was probably one of the funniest moments I've seen Dom play. <laughs> it was Alex Verdugo. He hit it to me. And when I threw it, I swear I thought it was on the money. I thought I got him out. And it was way over his head. So bad. At this point, we're all in the same boat. We don't really know what baseball, if it comes back this year, is going to look like. But – there does seem to be a, a decent amount of agreement and a, a push towards having a universal DH if the game does come back this season. Luis, from your perspective, have you thought about how having a DH this year would impact this particular roster in a positive way? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've had uh, different talks, you know, among coaches and, uh, um, and, and some of the things that come to mind is, is the health factor. That's the number one thing, you know, just having our pitchers uh, with a quick ramp up and, uh, you know, whatever scenario we run into, spring training wise and, and regular season wise, uh, that quick ramp up, I mean, we, we want to leave the pitchers alone. And then, you know, with the individuals that we have on the team, a guy like, you know, Dom and, and JD that can move around in different positions. With the depth that we have, um, I think the guys showed last year that for a national league team, we you know, we scored some, some runs last year. And that we have the, the guys that can definitely uh, swing the bat. 
Dom, Luis mentioned it, you guys specifically, Dom and JD, and I think that was one of the first thoughts that came to my mind when I saw Universal DH. Okay, this now opens up more opportunity. Was that one of your first thoughts? Like, this could really affect me personally in a positive way. You know, I'm lucky to, to be in the big league because this is a privilege, you know, and it takes a lot of hard work to get here. So, you know, whatever, like I said, situation I get put in, you know, I want to be prepared. And, you know, if we do get the University of DH, you know, I want to make sure I come in prepared. And, you know, I want to make Louie make tough decisions. I want to I want to force him to, to make some tough decisions because if he's forced to make tough decisions. I mean that our club is doing some, some things real well. It's a pretty good lineup, but – we get an extra hitter in there. I think it should be super fun to see what this offense could do. I was super pumped about it. You know, uh, individually, you know, you can't get wrapped up into it. But as a team perspective, what Dom said, I definitely think it's going to make harder decisions for Louie. It's going to be a great, you know, um, addition to our lineup just to have another bat in there, um, even though Jake really wants to hit. But I think it would be better for us. So, yeah. And, Steve, I'm telling you, like, this team, like, all we want to do is win. That, that's just our whole goal. Um, you know, we, we hate losing. And we take it personal, you know, when we lose games that we feel like we should win. So we really are a very selfless team. You know, you see, like I said like all the time, you see Alonzo, he'll go up to the plate looking for signs from the third base coach or looking for a hit and run or a bunt. Like, that's just how selfless the player he is. And that's just how the whole team is. Where we're like, Pete, go up there and just try to hit a home run. Like, why are you looking at these stars? He's not giving you any signs. But. I mean, I think it goes to show, you know, the personality of the group. And, you know, our only goal is just to win ballgame. When he officially got the job, Noah Syndergaard tweeted out, Luis Rojas is officially the most jacked manager in the league. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Um, is this true, J.D. Davis? Uh, a a absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think the man – Personally, he gets extra larges or double XLs just so he can fill them out or beat that shirt. So he goes into – it's like his own personal mission every single day. It's unbelievable. I mean, the man can do some skull crushers like no other, sitting there doing <laughs> biceps, you know, bench, whatever. I mean, the dude is absolutely hmm. jacked, and I think he's going to have uh, Gabe Kapler running for his money. So, <laughs> I was going to ask about Gabe Kapler. I mean, he's the one that, that set the standard. He also apparently – licks ice cream, then spits it out into a cup. Do we have anything that extreme, Luis, or do you eat like a, a relatively normal individual and just, just work out? Well, I got I to gotta say this. I mean, um, the adjustment on, on working out has been a little different uh, in, the last, in the last couple of months. So I've, been, I've been running, uh, preparing for a marathon. I, I was able to order a few things to, to work out at the house. You know, it's not the same as working out in the gym. But I do get my daily workout. Uh, the eating habits, I do uh, take care of myself in that matter. But I will not get into extreme like the one you just mentioned there. Luis, what is the story about when you were seven years old and you got thrown out of the dugout by your father for <laughs> yelling at players? That's uh, you, you got some good forces, man. Where did you, where did you get that? What are you doing? <laughs> I, I can't reveal my sources. You know that. It was, it was one of the most embarrassing days of my early life. Uh, we were here in the Florida State League, uh, by the way. It was the West Palm Beach Expos back, back then that my father was managing. Um, and me and my older brother, three years older than me, his name is Felipe. Uh, he works for the Orioles organization right now. We were in the dugout. I mean, we showed up at the ballpark same same, same time my dad did. And we just went out on the field and we took over the field. I mean, we hit, we ran, we did everything. And then we watched the game. So I was just in the dugout watching the team. So the other team just, they were just beating us. And everyone just, you know, they, they, I don't know how many straight strikeouts the, the opposing pitcher had at the time. So I started yelling at our own hitters. <laughs> and next thing I know, my dad is like looking at us, like go to my office, like he locked us up. I think no. And until the, the rest of the game, like in front of the whole, the, all the players. And I was like, it was really embarrassing. I remember I was told, you never do that again or uh, after, after the game. And I learned that lesson that day from my dad. One of many lessons that he taught me in my life. I think you hit one homer in Savannah, right? Yeah. So I think, I think it was in his head. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a left, left hand to hit him, first baseman, you know, you know, a strong kid. First, 
he wants to hit more homers. So the next year he came a little bigger, let's call you right. You were little- <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, so the first month, Dunn was a little, you know, out of shape. And um, he struggled the first month. Kevin Morgan, they called me in, him and Louie, and they're like, hey, like, you have to bring some more energy, man. You don't know how bad this looks. Like, you're, you're jogging on the field. You're like the last one on the field. You're moving slow. You're, you're running around uh, the bases, um, you know, well below average. So that's all they told me. And I kept, continuously did it for a couple of weeks. And I didn't know this, but they had – uh, had an intern film me the whole time, just me, like me walking around the dugout, <laughs> me walking on the field, me running out uh, ground balls, and I kid you not, like it was, it was pretty embarrassing, you know, to see. I think that really opened my eyes because I never saw that from that perspective. I've only played a certain type of way up until that point, so I never knew how bad it really looked. And then when I finally saw how bad it looked, it just it just kind of, you know, changed for me. And, and I learned a lot. I mean, Louis, Louis helped me, you know, develop into the play I am today. And uh, I, I can't thank him enough for that. This guy was 19 years old, and things were so easy for him, you know. And uh, we knew that he was going to start running into – I mean, he's already facing tough competition. But we knew that as you move, you know, up in the ladder, you're going to face even tougher competition. And, and, and you know, we knew – that we need to, we needed to challenge him, and we need we needed to see things from a different perspective and how the game was going to get at some point. So he responded absolutely great. He ended up being the the MVP of that league that year. Hey, uh, Luis, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for joining us on our little show here. Hope you you had a good time, and hopefully we'll be we'll be seeing you really soon and, and getting to do some real baseball interviews. But we appreciate you spending some time here in uh, in the meantime. Thank you so much for having me. It was a, it was a great time. Great great seeing uh, these two uh, together interact. This uh, it brings great memories, and you you feel almost like the warm of the team too. So, looking forward to uh, gather soon when everything's safe for sure. And uh, you know, I had a great time. Thanks. All right, for Luis Rojas, JD Davis, Dom Smith, I'm Steve Gelbs. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Ha, 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 ha.